Welcome back to Steve's Project Car Garage. My name is Steve. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of a different video. Uh, a couple of weeks ago I brought my head and my uh, block on over to a machine shop here in Orlando and uh, kind of got an overview of what their thoughts were on it and uh, we're going to show that today. And we're also going to go back on over there to drop off some parts that I just got from Spitbits and we're going to take a look at the block and just kind of see where things are at with the whole process. So grab yourself a cup of jitter juice and hang out. It's going to be a fun video. So the machine shop that I went ahead and chose to go ahead and do the work for the car is uh, Tim Otes uh, Machine Shop here in Orlando. Um, I went ahead and I checked them out and I checked out another machine shop in the area and I felt these guys would uh, be the best option for my, my job. Um, so what I initially went over there to do was to just kind of get some insight into putting in hardened valve seats and uh, go ahead and skim the head and skim the block and then give it a hone. Um, and in talking with them, we discovered that also the cam bearings did definitely need to be replaced um, and uh, kind of went from there. Um, I brought them the uh, crank also and I had them go ahead and review the crank from the previous video when I polished it. And they actually watched the video, which is kind of cool. Um, but in measuring the crank, there's absolutely no problems with it. It looks to be perfect and well within spec and they were very happy with the way that, that came out. So we know the crank is good. We discovered throughout the process that the actual cylinders also were good, uh, as I had suspected, but my measurements were definitely not accurate. Um, but when taking a look at it, they found that everything was well within spec and they used an actual cylinder bore gauge to go ahead and check it out, which was awesome. Um, while there, when I dropped off the head initially, uh, Yasmiro, he's one of the owners of the shop, uh, went ahead and actually took the head and started to uh, resurface some of the valve seats to see if I actually needed to get hardened valve seats or not. And he said that the valve seats were good. What he did do is go ahead and uh, polish them and he also provided a three angle grind on the valve seats itself. So I'm pretty stoked about that. That's definitely going to be a really nice result, uh, especially when I go ahead and I put in new valves. The valves themselves were worn out. I brought them over to him to check out and we took measurements on them and they were definitely shot. So I went ahead and I ordered a whole new set of valves, both exhaust and intake. Um, so while over there though, he also noticed that the valve guides needed to be replaced. Um, so I ordered those up and we're gonna bring those over to them today as well. But uh, so we're doing uh, valve guides, uh, polishing and, and cleaning up the valve seats, regrinding them, putting in a three angle grind. Um, we're gonna do new valves uh, in general. And then uh, he's going to uh, go ahead and hone out the block and also put in new cam bearings, which is pretty cool. Um, so we have all that taken care of. I got a couple of other sticks in the fire right now in terms of getting a new cam. I'm going to go work with TSI. Um, I'll put a link in the description talking about them. But essentially, you can go ahead and buy a reground cam. And so we're going to take the emissions cam that I've got on this car because it's a 1970 when they started introducing emissions. And we're gonna get that uh, upgraded to just a mild road cam. Nothing crazy aggressive, um, just enough to be able to give it a little bit more pep. Um, so that's gonna be kind of what the deal is with that. I got a whole bunch of parts that I ordered from Spitbits. Um, I do need to get new pistons though. Yasmiro did get a measurement on the pistons and they do seem like they are pretty worn out. Um, pretty much which is what we're finding with everything on this engine. Um, so while granted everything looked good visually, when you start measuring the specs, everything was really kind of out of the whack. So anyways, let me show you what I got from Spitbits, and then we're gonna go ahead and take a trip over to, to uh, Tim Otes, um, uh machine shop, and we're gonna go from there. All right, so again, like I said, this is an order of stuff that I got from Spitbits, so we'll go over what I, I got here real quick. So I got the rear main seal. We got uh, the timing chain uh, cover seal. Got a bunch of uh, plugs for the uh, core. Um, I have to actually double check on the size of those. They seem like they might be small for the block, but anyways, we'll double check. They're probably right, but I uh, got some uh, small end bearings for the uh, for the rods. Got more of these small end bearings. Uh, let's see here. We've got the uh, main bearings here. Again, these are all going to be stock size, so nothing oversized. And then I got uh, the rod bearings here. Got a nice new timing chain. I'm not going to take that out, we'll leave it in the box, but timing chain. 
got the uh, tappet valves. These are the cam followers. Let's pop that open real quick. So, nice new followers. The other ones were decent, but there was one that was kind of sketchy, and I was like, you just can replace all of them. Uh, we have a bunch of uh, exhaust valves. Pop one of these guys out for you guys to see. Ooh, we got some crazy weather blowing through. Nice new valves, though. So I'm pretty excited about those. These are the exhaust valves are the ones that I needed too because the exhaust valves on mine were just absolutely shot. We have uh, exhaust valve guides. I'll just put those all on in there. Timing chain tensioner. And we have our intake valves. And we have the valve guides here as well. These are supposed to be the intake valve guides, but I just... I don't know why these are a little bit different from the exhaust valve guides. But... That's interesting, because the exhaust valve guides seem taller. I haven't removed the valve guides, so I'm going to assume that that is accurate in the way that they're supposed to be, but... I'm going to go ahead and put those on in here, because I need to bring those over to the machine shop as well. Uh, got an invoice, and then we have the uh, intake valves. So these look like, well, it's got a, it's got a little chip in it. These have been on a shelf for a while. It sure looks like. I'm kind of surprised by the quality on that, honestly. I guess maybe people don't replace intake valves all that often. And that's why these are pretty old. Look at that. Huh. Well, we'll get the machine shop to take a look at that and give me their opinion on it. That's kind of crummy. So anyways, those are our intake valves. And cam bearings. So these need to be replaced, and uh, this is a machine shop only kind of job. So, so I'm gonna take the contents of this here, and I'm gonna bring that on over to the machine shop. I got a lower end gasket kit. Even comes with the chunk of wood that you need for your front ceiling block. But that's that order. So I need to go ahead and order some more parts, uh, including uh, pistons. Um, I'm gonna get some new valve springs for the valve train and the valve train rebuild kit. Um, and uh, I need to figure out where I'm gonna get that from. But like I said, I'm gonna go with TSI for the cam, so I might go through them for the rest of those parts. But anyways, let's go ahead and uh, get in the car and uh, head on over to uh, Timotas Machine Shop. And uh, yeah, drop off these parts and check in and see how things are going with the block in the head. One hour. Mark 3s, the exhaust valve guides are a little bit longer than the uh, intake ones. 
Um, so, interesting little fact there. Uh, I did not bring my cam, and apparently they need the, the cam to actually be able to place the cam bearings. So it's going to have to make another trip back over this way to bring them the cam. Uh, but they got the block all cleaned up. The block looks fantastic. So, uh, really stoked about that. And, uh, yeah, so they're working on the head right now. And uh, let's go take a look at it. All right, so this is the uh, long exhaust valve guide that I was talking about earlier. Um, and these are the valve guides that were pulled out. And so uh, it seems as though maybe my engine here is just a little bit weird, but uh, in comparison to the earlier Mark III's, but uh, the exhaust valve guide on the uh, ones that I have are definitely shorter. Uh, these are all the guides, they're all the equidistant. So. Um, they're going to see what they can do to try to make these work. Uh, if not, though, then I'm going to have to reach back out to Nigel and see about getting uh, some different ones. So, we'll find out what that leads to. All right, so they just got this thing out of the uh, hot bath and they gave it a nice clean, uh, as you saw in the video there. Now we're going to go ahead and put these uh, valve guides in and uh, see how well they fit. This thing looks fantastic. They were also able to go ahead and get this guy loose, which was uh, giving me quite a bit of trouble before too because it was, it was stuck. And that's the valve to be able to go ahead and kind of bleed the uh, cooling. So that's important to have done. It's looking good. Just adjusting the height a little bit on them. Looks like those longer valve uh, guys will work just fine, which is good. Hey, Jeff. So we just went ahead and uh, you pretty much ground the seats back, right? Yes. Excellent. I found that one of the valve guides right here is uh, a little bit loose. So he's got a process he's going to do to get that tightened up so that way it's no longer uh, loose. But essentially as he was tapping it in, it was just pretty much dropping right out. So um, we're going to get that taken care of. All right, so Yasmiro is here going to uh, start to give us a, a three angle grind on the valves. So he's just got his uh, cutting tool here with a carbide bit to go ahead and cut that angle. Now that we've already got a ground. It's a pretty neat process. The next day all right so we're back from the machine shop there's a cool little like behind the scenes view of what they're doing over there on the block um it's actually the next day because uh i, I came home last night and uh after i found that needed the cam to do the cam bearings i brought them the cam this morning but uh i brought them the old cam i haven't got my new cam yet from tsi in fact i haven't even ordered it yet and i got to get on that today um, so they're going to do what they can with the bearings now, uh, but they said bring the block back once I have the new cam and they'll just double check to make sure that the fitment on it is good. So that's kind of what it is there. Um, that's on me for not knowing that, not thinking about that, but, uh, it is what it is. Uh, but the guys over there at the machine shop have been absolutely fantastic and I can't thank them enough for all the support through this process and dealing with my learning curves. Um, anyways, I'm going to show you a little something else that I'm working on currently, and then we're going to wrap up this video because there's not much else to talk about. So let's jump over to this next bit.
So I've been working diligently on trying to <laughs> remove the gasket uh, on this front part here, on the front plate and the engine plate. And uh, this is the timing chain cover gasket. And this thing is not coming off. I mean, it is on there good. So if you have any suggestions, please let me know. I mean, what I've done so far is I used a razor blade to try it and just kind of clean it up a little bit. I used a plastic razor blade. I used a metal razor blade. And then I even sanded it. I sanded this with like 300 grit to just try to get some of this off. But I mean, I know that if I keep sanding, I'll eventually remove it. But the thing is, when I run my finger over it, I can feel a little bit of it, like an imprint of it. And uh, I don't want to like take away metal. Like that's my concern. So if you've got any good ideas of a solvent or something to use to break that up, let me know. Otherwise, if not, Tell me, is it okay for me to just clean the rest of this, paint it, and send it? Because, I mean, there's not a lot of gasket there, and the gasket's pretty thick that goes over it. So, give me your opinions on that. And then, uh, on the back side, this actually cleaned up easier, but um, it needs some paint. Uh, and I want to try to get a little bit more of this gasket off up here. But again, it's the same thing, where it's like, it's almost just the color of the gasket that's there, and there's like no gasket material really left. So... Anybody that's done this before, let me know what you did in the past to try to clean it. Um, maybe I throw it in a sandblasting cabinet. I don't know. But I want to get it cleaned up and painted at least at a minimum. And I got the timing chain cover here. And kind of the same deal where I don't want to mar the metal with a razor blade and just go and hog wild on it. So maybe blasting cabinet. Maybe it's time for a trip over to Chris's for these parts. Let me know what you think. All right, over here onto the valve train. Um, I'm probably going to go ahead and order the rebuild kit from uh, Rimmer Brothers for this. They have an entire kit, which is pretty sweet. It's about 130 bucks. And uh, it comes with all new rockers and the springs um, and a new shaft. Uh, I haven't taken this apart yet, but I wanted to show you all if I can get this to focus here. Come on, focus, buddy. Well, maybe it's not going to focus. Uh, here, I'll just zoom in. How's that? I'll show you the wear. Like, this guy here is interesting. It's got, like, a little wear through the actual hardened steel itself. So I know that, that needs to be replaced. Um, then the rest of these, they don't look all that bad, but kind of curious what your thoughts would be. Would you go ahead and replace all of them um, and just rebuild the entire valve train uh, or what? So onto the push rods, these guys seem all right. They, uh, they're not bad. However, I do have one that has a bit of a, a chip in it and I am gonna have to replace that, I think. I don't think that there's anything I can do with that and I wouldn't wanna throw that into the motor. Um, I know that with shaving the head and the block, um, it's not a heck of a lot that they took off, but it could be enough to cause the, the height of these to be different. I don't know anything about that though. So before I go ahead and order any parts, if anybody could chime in for me and let me know what the scoop is on that, I would greatly appreciate it. Because I figure if I have to replace one, I may as well end up having to replace them all, right? That it makes sense. So anyways, that's that. Let's keep uh, going on and wrap up this video. All right, so that's where we're gonna wrap it up. Um, make sure that you guys go ahead and check out uh, Timotest. If you're out in the Orlando area, at least go ahead and hit them up on uh, Instagram. Um, give them a follow. Um, these guys have been fantastic to work with and just absolute pleasure working with my learning curve and me trying to figure out what the hell it is that I'm doing. So thanks to those guys. I really appreciate it. A um, couple of other things I wanted to touch base on real quick is I just placed an order with uh, Ted over at TSI uh, to go ahead and get the cam and uh, pistons and a bunch of other stuff, um, including the valve train equipment. Um, but still, let me know what you're thinking about as far as replacing all that stuff goes. Because I'm just curious to hear what you guys think. But mm -hmm. I, I've pretty much decided that it's, it's going to be one of the things I was going to do. I um, also went ahead and I picked up some ARP studs for both the head and for the um, rods. So we got those. And uh, yeah, it's coming together. I hope that maybe this time next week I'll be putting together the engine or at least getting it started. Uh, but we'll see. It's all a matter of kind of how long it takes to get my order from TSI. So just remember that when working on project cars like these, you go ahead and find yourself a really good machine shop and don't be that dreaded previous owner. Cheers.